right, folks, it's Chris Gordon back with you uh, for part two of the Scott McGill's uh, inspired workout uh, that I got from uh, his clip that is also in the description here, uh, as well as the video I did last week, which was part one, which was the ascending version. And this was uh, Scott's take on Slominski's pattern number six from uh, his thesaurus of scales and uh, melodic patterns. And um, what Scott had done was he had taken the pattern number six, which was originally in C, and moved it to A. So we have A, B flat, C, E flat, E, and G flat. And what Scott had done was he had taken off the A and given us B flat, C, E flat, E, and G flat, giving us a five note pattern, which uh, last week I took that and ascended it in minor thirds. And today I'm going to be descending it uh, backwards. And uh, though that seems like a very obvious thing to do, the reason I separated this from last week was because I want to talk about a couple of things that I do when I'm working on this kind of material, especially Scott's material. Uh, there's two uh, things that I work on. One is called uh, reduction, and the other is called compounding. It's kind of word, little words that I came up with. That I mean, I didn't come up with the words, but uh, the definitions uh, <clears throat> is kind of how I look at it. So I'm going to be getting into that uh, today. But for now, let's start with just running these notes so that you can see what the pattern is going to be. Uh, and before I get started, I wanted to clarify something that I said last week in uh, the video. I began by saying that, you know, this is a very clinical kind of warm-up exercise. And then I made a comment about how it's not improvisation. And I think that I said that out of context. Uh, these are for improvisation. These are improvisational tools. And hopefully the end game is that you can use them in an improvisational setting and also in a compositional setting. So I just wanted to kind of clear the air on that one because uh, I felt a little bad about that when I looked back at the video. So uh, let's jump in here and take a look at the descending version of this. We have uh, A, which is interesting because we shaved that off on the ascending version and the descending version is going to start on that very note A. And um, I'm also going to be referring to everything in flats for my accidentals. So if you see them as sharps, that's fantastic. But uh, for today's purposes, I'll be referring to everything in flats. So I have A, G, G flat, E flat, and D flat. That's my first little pattern of five. My picking on that is up, down, up, up, down. I'm going to shift down a minor third. I have G flat, E, E flat, C, and B flat. It's the same shape. Now when I shift to the B and G string, I'm going to have that half step issue that we had last week. E flat, D flat, C, A, and G. You get used to that little shift there in the middle of that. When I move that down a minor third, okay, I'm going to have the C. B flat, A, G flat, and E. Another little, uh, little, little half step thing going on. It's the same shape as this. When I move to the G and B string, I'm going to be going back to our original shape. A, G, G flat, E flat, D flat. Move that down a minor third. I have G flat, E, E flat, C, and B flat. Okay. Now I'm going to be moving to the D and the uh, uh, A string, okay? And this is going to move us down to this, which is E flat, D flat, C, A, and G. Sorry about that, losing my light. Apologize. I'm going to move that down a minor third, okay? So we have that pattern, moving it down a minor third. I have C, B flat, A, G flat, and E. At this point, I'm going to move to the final two strings, which is A and E, okay? And I'm going to have A, G, G flat, E flat, D flat. Another minor third, E, I'm sorry, G flat, E, E flat, C, and B flat. Resolving to A, which then I'm putting in this oh, A7 flat 5 voicing to a D major 7. The D major 7 is the resolution for me. Now, uh, I'm not going to get too deeply into the theory and the applications. Uh, you'll find a lot of that in Scott's video, which also, as I said earlier, is uh, in the description here. Um, but the line that I just played is 
I'm hearing it over that chord, over that A7 flat five, and then I resolve it to a D major seven. Okay. So uh, all together, it's coming down fives. It's kind of nice to just put that at the end, kind of give you kind of like a nice conclusion, right? Okay, so now let's talk about a couple of things that I do to really start to get this together and feel comfortable moving them around uh, in this context. And the first thing I do is something that I call reduction. And the definition to that in this context is where I take one pattern and I play it a certain amount of reps before I move to the next pattern and play that the same amount of reps. And for purposes of time, I'm going to use a low number of reps, which is four. And then I'm going to reduce to three, to two, to one. Normally, when I'm working on something, those reps are much higher. But uh, today, we'll just do four. So we have, if I did this first one four times, shift. Okay, so. What this does is it not only gets me comfortable with that odd number, that odd number of five, but it helps me relax my picking and keep me kind of focused. And then it also gives me a moment to be able to navigate where I'm going to be going. Okay, and this is usually in the very beginning when I'm learning this stuff. So, uh, and I'm just going to use this example here, uh, the, the, this, these two patterns. Uh, now the next uh, reduction would be three per. Okay, then two. Then one. That's one way. Of course, you could do that throughout the entire process. Break it down to three times each, two times each, one times each. All right, so the other thing I want to talk about today is compounding. And what compounding is, is when I take a group of notes. I heard Al Dimiola do this some years ago. I really liked this in his playing. He was doing some sort of triplet thing, like a triplets, and then there would be this 16th note triplet into the phrase. really like that a lot. He does that a lot in his improvisations. So I decided to do that with this one. So I'm going to have groups of five and then bring in a group of ten. Right? So here I'm using the R friendly metronome to establish the five, right? So we want to get that going first. So I got my metronome here at 91. I don't know why it's on 91, but that's where it is. And I'm going to be putting fives to that click. Okay, now I'm going to compound it. Fives, ten. focus on my picking, staying relaxed, especially on those transitions. So that's uh, a couple of things that I wanted to share with you today on the descending version. Thanks again to Scott McGill for the inspiration behind all of this. And I hope you're getting something out of it. And stay tuned for a lot more. Have a great weekend. Everyone.